All right, welcome back. So just two more points from chapter 10. Uh, we just looked at, uh, you know, identify your location. Let's go to identify other locations. Now, as you've finished your initial stage, it could be a year, it could be two years, it could be five years. But as you've moved on, look for opportunities to start in different places, identifying other locations. Now, again, these are things that are both God ordained and also practically thinking. Right? Now, uh, here's what happened. Many years ago, uh, the founder of, so APC North is there, right? So the founder of that school is a believer, and she wanted you know, a ministry to come and teach uh, the children in the school. Now, they so they approached APC. APC was said, okay, we used to go every week to minister there. And then eventually, we you know, we also asked them, can we use your place to start APC, you know, start a church location there, right? So now you have Central, which is in the heart of the city, right? And then you, we already had South, which is near Jayanagar. And now this was going to start off, right? Now, this is another part of the city. But it was God ordained in the sense that God just brought the right people. They said, yes, you can take any hall that you'd like in the, in the school. You can use it. So when we started, what we did was there were some people from central or the other or south who lived around that side of town or maybe even didn't have to live around there but they formed a core team and went to to north to this place and began to start the church services right so you when you want to identify locations you keep it in mind and ask god to open the right doors right well, some of the ways you can do it is through evangelism. You, you again, you just go and you re reach out to people. Uh, you disciple, uh, and then serving and meeting people's needs, and that's how this happened, right? This new location. Then you look at APC East. I think it was early two thousand and ten, ten or eleven. Uh, I could be wrong in the year, but uh, somewhere around that time, now, we used to. Uh, there was a group of people meeting in east of Bangalore, right? And the, once they were, they used to meet there every week, right? Uh, and then eventually, it came to uh, you know pastor's mind that we need to start a church location there. So then that that evening meetings were continuing, uh, like every every week they used to meet, and then there came a time we launched into the church service. Now, there was a core team from the main church who went there, east of Bangalore, right? They traveled all the way there, helped uh, in establishing the church, right? So identify places, keep it in mind. Now, for example, uh, right now, we know, OK, we're going towards Hasur in the near future. Sorry, not Hasur, uh, Devan Ali, right? We're going towards Devan Ali in the future. Okay, so what we can do? Definitely, we need people there. We need people to you know, to start something there. Uh, so that's always on the mind. And then eventually, we will begin to work on it. We will have a team who will go there, launch a church, and you know, you know and build a church there. So as you do this, be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Then you have the house church model. If God, in some way, decides that. Uh, you're going to be a church, house church itself, and you have this clarity from God, you feel that this is what you want to do, only the house church, then you go ahead with it, right? Uh, but again, you need to think on how, you need to take other things into mind and think and see if this is something that can be done. Now, in villages, it's possible, right? But in cities, very unlikely, but if you feel that that's what God wants you to do, go ahead, right? Uh, but be ready to you know, face things that may come up when it's a house church, right? Uh, okay, let's go into chapter 11. Before that, any any questions? Any thoughts? Yes, go ahead, Francis. So I had two questions. Uh, one is like regarding the planning the 
church like plan- sorry planting the church so is it like uh, don't plant the near the churches so what about the denominational churches we can plant the churches near the denominational churches okay that's a good question now i would say personally i would say even if it's example of there's a methodist church with 2000 people there right i would say i wouldn't go very close to them and start because no matter what it's a church and later on i do want this pastor coming and telling me hey you started a church close by right just 2 minutes away or 5 minutes away from mine and i see that some believers here are coming to your from my church are coming to your church now whether they are methodist baptist all that they don't care they have left my church they coming to your church why are you doing this right now if i'm 5 kilometers away it's a deliberate choice that people are making they are deliberately saying i want to go to this place then that's different right so in every church you'll have people from denominational church coming for example it's a, a independent church right you will have people from uh, you know denominational churches coming but we don't want to be somebody who's you know uh, uh, going close planning a church there and and you know people are coming it's only going to cause strife as much as possible try to just you know keep a little bit of distance right so that way you're not intentionally causing any problems right now you may have a pure heart when say see i don't want any of the methodist people coming from the methodist church coming here i don't want you may feel that way but the pastor doesn't know that no and the believers say i want to come you can't tell the believers don't come go back to your church because uh, they may say hey i want to come because i want to learn more from the word i want to be part of a good fellowship now again i we cannot tell them no go back so we must be open so if if it's a little bit away from like distance then you can say okay think about it again then you know divine order in the city wide church go inform your church inform your pastor tell them that you're going to this church give them the reasons and then come so i would personally do it that way and even if it's a denomination see because denominational churches also are big right? so thousands of people at time in places so so let's go away so so that it's not like competition yeah as a king was saying is regarding traveling pastor mm. so if you are offering the traveling to the people okay like from what i saw in one church there were the, some people are coming from the different places yeah uh so this pastor offered the traveling facility yeah. but what happened after some days one day because of some reason travel can't go yeah from that day these people stop stops coming mm. so my question is like if you are starting offering a like traveling and all if people depend upon traveling they will come to church it will become a problem so do we have to provide the traveling facility or not yeah again this is a practical yet important question see if you're ministering to people right and and especially in the initial phase right you feel that okay these people want to come right now for example they look at hey, I, i want to do do the travel the travel arrangement tt come pick them up come finish church go back now if you're doing something like this you can do it initially but here's what you must do one is you look at the people right first thing why aren't they able to come on their own okay one distance two timings three financially it's difficult for them you know, every sunday maybe auto cab or uh, it's they they finding it difficult these three could be the reasons but they want to come to church right so initially before you start this what you can do is tell them see for now initially we'll help you right because the church is just launching you've just launched the church maybe it's one year into the church or six months one year so i'm see for now we'll help you what we'll do is first of all you should be in a position to be able to spend so much money okay given the fact that you have that much funds see see 
we will provide for you. You come. But this is not a long term solution. Eventually, you will have to make a way to come on your own. You must take the responsibility to come on your own. Now we'll help you. Right? Uh, now, again, we don't want to spoon feed people. We don't want to make it easy for them. It's, it's, it's not like, OK, only if you send man, I'll come. Otherwise, I'll not come. Then it, it, you look at you know spiritually, there's something wrong. They must be willing to come, no matter what distance. And so I would say, you look at the people. Now, if they're working professionals and they say, send a van, I will not send a van. You're working, no? You can come. If you're going to work and coming back, you can also come to church. But if they are probably people who are of very low income, farmers, or just doing some daily uh, wage routine, we help them out. And, uh, you can again, you can start it, but let them know that this is not a long term thing. So even when you stop, they are not disappointed. Hey, pastor told it's not a long term, thing. maybe six months. So then until then, we have to find a way, either find out, you know, if we can come by bus or um, what are the other modes of transport available, whatever it is. Right. So when you let them know in advance, it's very good. Right. Uh, so they have it in their mind. They know that, OK, this. And when people don't come after that, it shows the heart. That means they really don't want to. It's not like they're desiring to learn more of God. It's just like, OK, we'll go. It becomes like a kind of a picnic. Come in the van, enjoy, because they sit, listen to the word and all of that. But they go back. So remember that there's only so much you can do as a leader. Right? So there used to be a time when we were studying, example, right? When we were studying in Bible college, there was no van and all like this. What you see out right now, how you guys just get into a van and go, no, no, no. We used to catch three buses. This is regular buses. Luckily, you know, I had a bike. So I'd say one of them, one of the boys could sit with me. But I've seen the struggle of these guys, our batch and the batches before us. They struggled. Imagine going to north. So they used to go, get down, come stop there, and then walk all the way inside. And then after church, again, come back, walk all the way to the main road, get a bus, two, three buses, then somehow find their way to the hostel. We had to do it. But now it's come a time when you know we're able to do these things, right? Have a van, pick you up, drop you, all of these things. But we we had it the hard way. So it's not like I'm crying about it, but what I'm saying is that time we were not at that level to have a van and come and go, come and go. It would have been very expensive. But over time, God has blessed us and we've done this. We're doing this now. You understand what I'm saying, right? So um, so if you feel that this is something that you can continue, the van thing, continue. Uh, but if you feel that you can't, you should be in a position to make the decision in freedom. OK, I can't continue as a leader, so I have to stop this. I can't be spending, example, 5,000 a month on van and and struggle to pay my rent for the hall. The rent for the hall is more important than the van. So I need to you know, make my decisions right. And then there'll come a time when you have funds coming in regularly. If you want to make it available, make it available. But best thing is to inform the church. Inform the, uh, so for example, in APC, we inform the church about everything. Because everything we do is from their, what they give. Right? We inform the church. So we tell them, see, we were planning to buy a land Come and see the land. So we went to Hosur. You remember that? Then we said, okay, planning to buy here. We called all church folks, you know, uh, in Devanali, come and see. This is what the funds is. It's not like a secret. All of us know, right? What we're planning to do with the land. It's not a secret. It's not like something that, okay, what are we going to do with the land? Everyone know what we're going to do with the land. It's not a secret. We know everyone know what are the funds. How much is there? How much is needed? Everything. Everyone know it. Now, we may not know the detail, the paperwork, how, how much has it gone, what is the construction, all those things secondary. But we all know what is going to happen there. There's going to be a Bible college. There's going to be a media center. We're going to have conference, a, a church there. That's what we're going to do. Everyone knows. Ten years down the line, Francis, you come to Bangalore and say, hey, I want to go there. You, can, you will see it. 
it doesn't change right so decisions that you make you should be able to make it with confidence right okay any other questions if not we can get into chapter 11 yes chilla so like when we opening the new church and all like we should mention the church or it's okay to not mention church when we give name title or for for legal uh, legal work like uh, for example i'm doing a uh, starting a new church yeah. a certain area uh, maybe the home fellowship or whatever it is so like i should mention the like uh, for example baptist church this church like its church should be there or it's okay if you'll not give church like a house of prayer for example i'm giving like it's okay to give these names or like we should mention the church yeah so you can put any name so you can say chera international ministries cim okay <laughs> See, Chira International Ministries. Okay. Now, when you're making the trust, you, you should mention in the trust, under Chira International Ministries, here, I will have Fasting Church all across India. North, South, East, West, everywhere. All across India. Two, I will have Bible College. Now, under Chira International Ministries, you can change the name of the Bible College. You can have, uh, you know, Wisdom Bible College. Example, right? Now, but it's all under CIM. Under that, you've already written. Nobody can come to you, hey, you're a church. CIM, who's doing you to start a Bible College? I have it. It's in the trust. Inside that, it's written. I can start Bible College. I can start a school. A regular school. I can start home for the aged, children's home, destitute home. I can start, then I want to do international missions sometime. So again, you may have to do some paperwork for the international going out of India. Some paperwork may be there. Right? This is my account. This is FCRA. For example, I, I accept funds from other countries. Right? Or I don't accept funds. So, for example, APC, we don't have FCRA. All that we're doing is from Indian money. No outside money. Because there are people who are working there who give, but they give it in Indian currency. Because we don't have uh, international currencies coming in. You get what I'm saying? right? All people's church and world outreach. That is the trust name of the trust. Under that, we have so many ministries, Bible College, we have Catalyst, uh, all these other things. So you get what I'm saying, right? So you can name it whatever you want to name. CIM, under that, you can have. You can say, OK, uh, so anytime you buy a property, right? you register it to the trust. right? Now you may say, hey, I'm buying it on my name. I am putting in all the funds. It's okay. You put it on the trust. That's better to do it that way. So that later on, you know, when you're when you're giving the ministry or you're handing over with the ministry to somebody else, the things don't change there. The land is on the trust. Safe. And over time you have the power of attorney, all those things. Those are all legal things that you'll get you can get help, right? So you don't have to know all those legal matters. You hire a lawyer, he'll tell you what to do. But while making the trust, you have to mention all this. If you don't mention and then you start a Bible college, then that'll become a problem. Just mention everything. I'll have worship time. I'll be as a church, we'll do this, this, this. We want to do um, school, we want to do uh, college, we want to do Bible college, we want to do Sunday services, uh, we want to do uh, activities all across India. Put everything, whatever you have to put. That's the best part about the trust, right? We have the freedom that way. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's get into chapter 11, launch phase. Now, here's important. You only launch once. Don't be launching the church every Sunday. <laughs> launch once, right? How do you want to launch? You can do it in a quiet, simple way, like what APC did, Sunday. Sit. Today is the launch Sunday. From tomorrow onwards, next Sunday onwards, we will continue as a church. This is the vision. These are the announcements. This is 
uh, volunteers we need. Done. Simple way. No banner, no uh, hoarding, no announcements, nothing. It's few tracks. Now, that is one way. Two, now in a day and age that we are, this is 2001. So now you, you must think, okay, 2024, 20, 23 years later, I can't do the same way. If God is asking you to start in a big way, hire a hall, get an LED screen, have a big, good band together, you know, have a, a concert night, and then you launch and say, tomorrow onwards or Sunday onwards, we're going to be a church. This is the vision. We're going to meet at this location. Give them the details. Give them pamphlets of the church. You can do it with a big bang. Right? Now, while doing with a big bang also, be you know don't uh, don't focus too much on uh, you know what's happening like in terms of you know I'm, I'm doing it in such a big way why nobody came or why there's a less attendance don't worry about all that you can start in a simple way big bang but most starts launching phases will be small and meager it's okay right uh, so then another way is you can do a series of meetings where people. Uh, you know, for example, you start on Thursday, right? You say, okay, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're going to have three days of fasting and prayer. And Sunday, we launch the church. Or you can say Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we'll have three days conference about the local church. And then we will start the church, whatever, however you feel led to. Again, as we said, there is no set formula. How the Lord is leading you, go ahead and do it. Right? These are just guidelines that we can use. Okay. Now, the first church service, keep it simple. Something new people will find easy to follow. Now, first church service, don't give 100 announcements. We will do this, we will do that, we will do this. And then now they are all confused. What is the vision? And uh, what is the thing? Uh, what is there next week? No. So next week, next week, then uh, next month also some meeting is there. No, uh, they're all confused. Keep it simple. Thank you everyone for coming. My name is this. And this is a vision that God has put in my heart. So I wanted to start this church. Uh, we have a website available. Uh, and this is the website. You can go through and read about the more details on the website, if you have a website. Then you can say something about the church. Keep a simple, simple message. Don't talk about uh, uh, you know uh, end times Bible prophecy, uh, what mark of the beast, Antichrist on the first Sunday. Please don't do that. <laughs> right, first Sunday, choose something very simple. Right. Okay. Talk about things that you can talk about. Imagine you go first Sunday, you talk about mark of the beast. They'll say you are only the beast. <laughs> I'm uh, just joking. But meaning you just, just keep it simple, right? Because um, the problem is, uh, first Sunday, you want to show everyone you know everything. Don't do that. People will figure People will figure out how much you know over time. Right? So just choose something simple. Get to know people. Keep it very simple. Set your expectations. Very important. Francis, if, you're, if, you're, if, you, if transport is in your mind, set the expectations initially itself. Your first service set, set the expectations, what they can expect. So you can also say, see, as a church, what I feel is that even as you come, we're going to have 45 minutes of worship. Then we'll have 10 minutes announcements. But what we also want to do is we want to have time for testimonies. Since this is the first Sunday, if anyone would like to share, you can share. But going forward, the coming Sundays onwards, if anyone would like to share a testimony, your testimony should be very brief. It should only be for three minutes. Now, you give somebody a mic and say, share testimony, they'll share a full sermon, 45 minutes. Don't do that. So you set the expectations. Three-minute testimony, right? We'll take one testimony each week. Right. Now, three, four people will say, I also want to share testimony same Sunday. No, one Sunday, one testimony. Example, right? Okay, declaration. And then we'll have the word. Word is 45 minutes, right? So these are the things we'll do. We will also talk about series. We'll talk, we believe in the Old Testament, New Testament, um, you know, and so you pick up from there. You set expectations. We believe in healing. We believe that, the, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit will minister to us as a church. 
so we believe that the Holy Spirit can minister to you in your lives and change things that are happening in your life. So, uh, so you also come expecting for God to minister to you. So what you're doing is you're setting expectations. You share the vision. Welcome people to be part of the vision. Listen to that word, welcome. Don't force people. You know what? You are salt and light. You better be salt and light. If not, I see you anywhere on the road being something else gone for you. <laughs> no. Welcome, people. Right. Hey, this is the vision. This is what we want to do. Come. Now, just because we say salt and light doesn't mean all of them who come to church will be salt and light. Give them time to catch the vision. No. Right? You, they need time. You can't expect somebody who's new one month in church and say, hey, I told you the vision, no salt and light. How can you not be that? You have to go and preach in your uh, office. No, give them time. Right? Share your vision. Help them. Welcome them to be part of the vision. And once they catch the vision, no, nobody can change it. Say, no, this is what I am. It, it gets rooted. It gets you know, imprinted in our spirit. And keep everything focused on Jesus. Don't, especially the first service, don't focus on yourself as a pastor. You know what? I'm only 35 years old. Where, no, I'm only 25 years old. And I, with great difficulty, I started this church. I prayed for three years. Like Elijah prayed for three years for no rain. Uh, same way when I prayed. Then somehow God came in. Now the whole so time you're only talking about you. What's happening? Everyone is sitting and looking, oh, you did so well. You are the one who started the church. Then I studied Bible college. I finished three years in Bible college. After the three-year course, God told me, you have to do like this. So I did like this. You don't need to explain all of that. Keep it Jesus-focused. By the way, I also know how to you know, lead the worship. So when I'm not preaching, I'll lead the worship and show you one day. You know, all that. I keep everything focused to Jesus. It's not about a person. Now, as a leader, that is your responsibility. It's very easy to lose focus. Remember, I love that portion. Yeah. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they have seen the transfiguration. They've seen Jesus uh, with you know uh, Moses and Elijah. They're seeing the glorified Jesus. They come back and say, Jesus... Uh, we were just discussing among us, can I be on your left and uh, my brother be on the right side? Think of it. They've seen, I think, the most spectacular thing that they have seen in their lives. Nobody else saw it. Peter, James, John. Three of them. Two of them are saying, can I be on your left and right? Jesus is thinking, what are these guys here? They just saw me. They're seeing... They saw what I am, who I am. They know who I am. They want to sit on my left and right. You both, first free, one is going to die by the sword. If I was there, I would have told that directly. But Jesus was simple. The first martyr was James. He wanted to sit on the left. Killed. John, at least he lived on till the end. So it's very easy to get people focused. But James and John were like, okay, oh, so now you're Jesus. Now I'm with you. Among the twelve, can I be in your left and in your right? No. So keep everything focused on Jesus. Now don't don't go by the person, right? Then plan follow up. Again, uh, I'm sure you may have you may know this that uh, when you have new people coming into church, don't say they've come in and then just be happy. No, you have to have a follow up routine. If you don't have a, a follow-up plan, then you may end up missing out on church growth. Some things that we do here at church in APC. Okay. Now, we have five locations. All the FTV first-time visitor cards come to the church office. Now, these this follow-up plan has come happened over time, not immediately. Right? Over time, we have learned how to do this. So they all the cards, it's segregated, central, north, south, east, west, all the cards come in. Now the member care team makes the first call. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, how did you, did you enjoy the service? Yeah, I enjoyed. actually I'm just visiting from Bombay. I'll be going back next week. 
but I enjoy the service. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for coming. So you put a mark, you make a note there. Coming from out of station, we'll be returning back. No need follow up. Okay. Because he's going back. Then you have some. I've just moved to Bangalore looking for a church. Still not yet decided. It's written on the card. So call up. Hi. Thank you for coming to church. Um, I hope you enjoyed your time. Uh, so I see that you have just come to Bangalore. Welcome. I hope you're able to settle down well in your here. Um, so you're still looking out for a church. That's completely fine. Go ahead. Uh, and if you feel comfortable, do come back. Is it okay if we can send you uh, details of our coming events and uh, church programs? Sometimes they'll say yes. Sometimes they'll say no. OK, well, is it OK if we send you details on our life groups? Life groups are smaller settings that meet across the city. Now, sometimes they'll say yes. Some, if they say yes, you say, OK, thank you. I'll send you the details. You send them the life group leader's number, everything. Now, in the comments, you write, interested to be part of church, need follow-up. Now, what happens is this person, next week, after the next Sunday, on Monday, the member care team calls. Right? They say, hey, I had called you last week. Were you able to attend church yesterday? Oh, yes, I, I, I came to church. Okay, that's wonderful. I think I'm going to come I, and I have to connect. So you see them, you're, they're gradually just coming into the church. Then sometimes they'll say, no, I couldn't come to church. I was thinking I, I want to join you know, Malayalam church because that's my mother tongue or Kannada church because that's my mother tongue. Yeah, feel free. Go ahead. So then your second comment you write, person said, was comfortable joining a regional church, no need of follow-up, willing to get details on church events. So now those which have no need of follow-up, we don't follow up again. Those who need a follow we connect them. So now we also have something called as a connect team, which is there before. It stopped for some time, but we just restarted it again. So we you know we the connect team the member care team now as a pastor what do i do now i know okay this couple has come to church now the member team is calling them they don't know who they are but what i do is somewhere during the week i call them hey my name is paul uh, we met at church uh, so thank you for coming and oh you're the pastor of the church yes OK, uh, oh, thank you, let me say. And then we just have a conversation. That way I've built, they feel that, OK, the pastor is called. Right? At least something, right? So there's this first connect, because they know the face, uh, first connect. So these are things that we do. There's a lot of follow-up required. And we think, hey, it's such a big church, why follow up? No, it is important. Every person uh, following up is important, right? It says here, Prince is asking a question. Is it necessary to keep the church attendance of, of the believers? So what can we do with a large congregation church? OK. Now, there are reasons. It's not necessary. It's just for us to help us know where we are, Prince. But, uh, so in APC, we have church attendance. Right? Uh, these are the number of people who come. Yes. Just so that we know where we are as a church in terms of numbers. Now, with a large congregation, you can still do it. Now, for example, see, now at APC, we may be about 700 people uh, you know, in the upper room. The worship evening that we had, we were about 672, almost 700 people. So people actually had, we had volunteers counting. Now, the moment the church becomes 2,000 and all, you say, forget about it. Who's going to sit and count 2,000 people? So you get an average count, right? How do we do that? You have the hall. You put 2,000 chairs. In 2,000 chairs, if you see about, uh, you count the number of empty chairs, OK, minus uh, average attendance, this much, 1,800 people. Right Now, that's what you can do. Because you don't want to waste time sitting and counting. Like, uh, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of volunteers required. Uh, but as long as we are somewhere around 500, 600, I think it's a we are able to do it. But after that, it just, uh, it just may not be necessary to do that. Right, Prince? I hope that's OK. OK. OK, have a um, follow-up plan Plan ahead when you have visitors. Have a welcome team. Uh, learn how to interact formally and get to know them. 
uh, now again here's a very important thing that uh, we must develop as pastors and leaders we must develop the ability to interact formally and informally how do i do that and you think how how see when people look at you you will you are the pastor of the church so you got to you know that hey i have to interact formally i need to be respectful right but in the meanwhile you must also understand that you have another group of people maybe youth or uh, teens who want to connect with you no i can't say brethren i am the pastor so i will only preach on sunday and go back home this is who i am this is what i know there are times i'll have to you know when at east i i become a youth for the youth say so they'll say pastor come come sit no for the youth i'll go and sit right now sometimes i don't go because oh pastors come so they you know just change but then i just be a, you know just try to be try to understand them we all gone through that phase of being a youth right um you know some of the youth meetings uh, you know the language that i hear is you know it's weird because i used to use those language before you know what da what do they all those things right and nothing wrong in it so we understand okay these are things that what's up man and all those things right hey they are youth you can't say thou thou art the pastor and you the youth are not going to talk to like that right so you understand right you, you get along with them but you don't you don't you know come to a place where you don't correct them if they if it's something that's out of line right? many times i've just say hey i think you should watch your tone the way you speak because others are watching others are hearing and they say okay okay you're just saying it politely right so the way you interact with people is very important you should be in a position as a leader where youth should be willing to come and talk to you families should be willing and to come and talk to you you should make it that way that's a role of a leader so now even after we finish today afternoon you know i'll be meeting with a couple of youth but i'll also be meeting with families now i have to switch gears when i'm meeting with youth i have to try and understand where they are coming from meeting with families it's a serious issue some of them are going through very difficult times so i can't be uh, it's okay da don't worry with the families can i say that i can't say that i need to know right so uh, i need to learn how to interact with the right people in the right way right uh, invite people back connect them into small group meetings do what you have to do uh, initial phase of connecting people very important okay if especially in the initial stage if if you set up these follow up procedures and these follow up plans and you raise up a team as the church grows it becomes very easy and so for example see now you, you may be 20 people 20 people you have two or three people in a team you say hey we'll have welcome team now these are things that are new for them right what is this welcome team pastor see what you have to do is when they come you shake hands with them welcome them and then when i say okay new people please stand up you give them the card give them you know you can replicate what you see in apc or any other church and then after that we'll follow up with them so in the team we'll have one couple two youth okay so the couples will connect with the couples the youth will connect with the youth and so for example you have 20 people in church one sunday four pe new people come to church so you tell them okay you go back and we'll call them and talk to them right now can you do it as a leader you also can do it but what you're doing is you're raising up a team and you're looking ahead so when we are 500 people i i won't have the time to sit and do this welcome calls i need to form a team now so you're just bringing it into process but you'll also have to be there like you know you'll have to call talk to the first time visitors but you're also raising up a team so maybe one day you're traveling sunday you have preached next monday you're traveling somewhere you are not holding the what is the give me the name and number of the person no you have two three people who can look after that right so start off with all these teams now 
Now, especially each one of you uh, have got exposure with APC. You have seen things, right? And I'm sure it's a big learning. Right? So you can implement these things in a small way. Sound and setup team, welcome team. You can also have a book table team. Have books that people take. Um, ushering team. Just replicate. And then over time, as a church grows, you will see, right? OK, everything is set in place. You as a leader, will it will be easier for you to make decisions. Uh, going ahead, right? Okay, chapter twelve. Let's go into chapter twelve. Any questions? Okay, chapter twelve strategies again for uh, urban evangelism. We'll just quickly go through this a uh, few steps, uh, and then we'll stop whenever a you know, couple of minutes as well. Or what we can do is we'll stop here. So we'll start off chapter twelve from next class. So. Because I don't want to stop in between. So we can take next class, the two hours continuously. We can start from chapter 12. Right? Any thoughts? Any questions? OK. It's good. All right, let's just uh, close in prayer. Father, we want to thank you so much for today, Lord. We thank you for teaching us and so much that we have learned about practical things. Uh, yet, Lord, we know that your word says in Zechariah 4, 6, that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your Holy Spirit. And we ask, Lord, that in everything that we do, that we be empowered, strengthened, and led by the Holy Spirit of God. We thank you for teaching us. Thank you for the seeds that are sown in our heart. I pray, God, that we will these seeds will bear fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. I'll see you next week. Take care.